Uh, welcome back, everyone. Thank you for connecting on this second session, where we will continue to talk about how the prophetic uh, prophetic is manifested. We saw the power of the prophetic word. And then uh, just now we saw how God uses prophetic intercession. Now we look at prophetic power. So prophetic power, as I said earlier, this section is uh, specifically talking about the manifestation of God's supernatural power, which is accompanied with the prophetic. So as we look at uh, the office, the office ministries, such as the fivefold you know, offices, you have the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, teacher. Uh, what we notice is that God's power is demonstrated in a, a different way in each of these offices, mostly pertaining to the kind of work or the kind of outcome which uh, is you know, required from each of these ministry offices. So if we take up something like uh, uh, a pastor, Okay, we would we would notice that a lot of uh, a, a lot of testimonies that come uh, once the prophetic is released have to do with the way people are being uh, guided, people's needs are being met in in a you know church setting or in in a ministry. So that's how the pastor is flowing in the prophetic, but that is resulting in ministering to the to the uh, congregation members or the sheep. So that's how we might see it revealed through this office but if we look at let's say an evangelist uh, the person is flowing in the prophetic but we may see more of you know uh, miracles signs wonders that have to do with drawing people into the kingdom so many lost souls are uh, saved and the workings of healings, miracles, you know, we, we've seen that, right? So many of these crusades where people carry that evangelistic grace upon them. They're in the office of an evangelist. So many mighty things happen, but that's the working of the prophetic in those certain ways. Uh, so similarly, when we look at some other ministry office, like let's say apostle, uh, apostle's office is, quite multifunctional and uh, uh, there is the advancing of new frontiers through the apostolic so we might see the power of god beginning to manifest in that way uh, we might see that new places are being opened up through the apostolic anointing we might see that uh, you know when the prophetic manifests uh, things may happen opportunities will come uh, or even unity unity of believers there are certain things that take place that cause the believers to walk in uh, unity you know as as brothers and sisters so depending on the the particular office the manifestation of the same prophetic anointing can be slightly different now this is not to say that uh, a pastor will not experience miracles the way an evangelist experiences yeah it can happen you know the same way but generally this is how we would see the manifestation of the power of god and it's just for us to understand how the prophetic flows because when we understand how the prophetic flows then it becomes easier for us to work work you know and uh, us to benefit from it for the people we are ministering to to be blessed by it so here in our uh, this particular section we see what the prophetic power can actually do so in scripture we have seen that there was mighty signs wonders uh, uh, especially when israel was brought out under the leadership of moses you know, we know how god worked there were judgments over egypt but then god protected his own people while they were in egypt if you think about the the time when the firstborns were were dying god said okay you put the blood of the passover lamb and nothing will happen to you so something supernatural is taking place and who's moses moses is a prophet remember moses is a prophet he's praying for the people he's hearing from god he's leading the people so how is the prophetic 
manifesting there is a supernatural protection a supernatural deliverance of these captive people they are coming out and you know you you notice how god actually uh, parted the red sea so there are all these miracles and wonders that are taking place just to deliver the captives and uh, it's it's happening you know uh, through through the prophetic ministry which is manifesting uh, through moses's life and you know different things that god was doing in the life of the children of israel so how can we apply this to ourselves today so we have seen the manifestation of the supernatural in deliverance of god's people so even today we know that uh, satan is uh, you know he he is our adversary he is like a roaring lion uh, going about you know, trying to find people that he can devour so while these things are happening uh, and satan is trying to bring people uh, in oppression we can go against it and bring deliverance so as we are flowing in the prophetic ministry the prophetic anointing what we would see happen is demonic bondages will be broken okay uh, people will be set free so uh, this is something we must expect that let the prophetic power of god be released and let people be delivered so again you know how how can this happen it can happen in different ways you know it can happen through a prophetic word that comes which accompanies the power of god and you know we've talked about that right uh, and and it creates faith stirs up faith and then people are experiencing that deliverance or you know it can happen even through prophetic intercession god reveals it to somebody and now they are praying and then now the power of god begins to manifest so different ways in which it can actually flow uh, so how else can we see the prophetic power of god and what what are the uh, sort of uh, functions of this prophetic power you know this prophetic power yes it delivers people but the prophetic power of god can also confront the demonic okay so where do we see this this is a, a good example we can see is from elijah's life isn't it elijah's life and ministry because when elijah lived it was a very tough period of time where you had jezebel and uh, you know uh, she was into all kinds of uh, occultic practices and so there was worship of uh, the god baal and ashera uh, and there were lots of sorcerers and magicians who were part of uh, this this entire worship and you know the the demonic if if you want to call it that way the demonic powers um, that were at work when elijah was trying to manifest god's god's power uh it, it was a it was like this whole conflict okay so god really needed to release his power through elijah's ministry and life to show his glory and that actually happened so the mount carmel experience where all these these worshipers of baal, baal are crying out to god and elijah you know god uses him to show that god's power is greater so the demonic powers were confronted they were exposed they were subdued but that is the power of of god uh, and in this case you know flowing through a prophet or in the uh, prophetic activity so we can expect that even today you know, when we see demonic powers when we are flowing in the prophetic uh, they will be confronted they will be subdued Okay, so we can keep that expectation from god so when the prophetic power flows demonic authorities you know demonic works will be destroyed and uh, so we should be excited about you know having the uh, prophetic flow through us now the prophetic can cause unusual miracles uh, we've already talked about this you know elijah and elisha remember uh, just one example that that i'm sharing there are many other old testament prophets that that we could we can refer to and say hey look through these prophets so many miracles are taking place so what is working what is upon their lives they have that prophetic grace they have that prophetic anointing and connected to 
that prophetic anointing are all these miracles okay amazing set of miracles uh, debt cancellation uh, people being uh, raised back to life uh, you know uh, unusual things even things like axe head floating in the water uh, so the prophetic accompanies power to cause unusual miracles so can these things happen today you know maybe a, a water turned into wine or, or something like that yes it can happen okay there's no uh, scripture and verse that says that these things have ended or god is saying that it is not going to happen anymore so we can continue to expect you know unusual miracles to take place through the prophetic then uh, prophetic power impacts national political leaders we've seen the lives of uh, prophets and how they were speaking uh, to different leaders during that times and obviously you know they were hearing from god they must have been prophetic intercessors also and that is how they were bringing the message to the leaders and uh, uh, things were taking place in kingdoms so we can expect this and it can happen at various levels it can happen depending on the 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 like we said right we have the progression so it can happen at various levels we have seen how through the prophets or people in the office of the prophet uh, there are greater or, or very prominent manifestations of the prophetic power so that's how it has worked uh, in in scripture and even today we can expect it so uh, you know this is something that we should be looking at is it happening today <laughs> that's another question uh, we we want to ask is it happening today the manifestation of the prophetic power in such a notable way what do you think Okay, in similar ways, Divya is saying not sure. So we go back to our uh, first lecture of the keys to supernatural ministry, where we said that this is the mandate which Jesus gave us to walk in the supernatural. And then we asked many questions. We said, hey, but why is it not happening the way it happened? Uh, you know, in, in Jesus' times. So there are answers to that. You see, God is working upon the church. So we talked about uh, the knowledge of, of who God is, how his power is manifesting. Now, we are all being brought into the unity of the faith remember so that is a process that is going on in the body of christ and as we are all uh, receiving that knowledge and revelation of uh, what his power is all about and we have the mandate and we can flow in this way what will happen as time goes by we will begin to flow in a greater measure we will begin to see manifestations of the power of god in a greater measure so we are heading in that direction Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, God is doing it. And also we talked about the, I think so, I, I don't know if we specified it, but the moves of God, how God is moving uh, uh, and he has moved. We talked about the different, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the moves that came restoring uh, uh, holiness in the church, restoring the gifts of the spirit, the truth about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, healing. So different things have happened in the body of Christ and God is bringing us to that place of strength. So even right now, you know, we are hearing of uh, a particular uh, move of god that that is seemingly taking place uh, in this place called asbury university so it's amazing god is working he's building his church he's bringing us to that place of greater strength so 
whether we have seen the manifestation of the prophetic power uh, in a mighty way till now or not, we can expect because God is moving us in that direction. So faith is arising and we will see the glory of God. Okay, So uh, that's the perspective we can carry when that question is asked, you know, how come uh, we, we are not seeing enough, but we are heading in that direction so any thoughts any any pointers before we move on to the next section here about prophetic song uh, yes yes Divya. yeah yeah Pastor Nancy, i was just uh saying that not in a personal level but yeah of course i've heard of a uh, few of those uh things as you were mentioning the asbury revival yeah it's, it's such an amazing move of god and it's like a very um uh, like turning people into repentance and uh, uh, a holiness kind of uh, very very nice uh, revival uh, like a move of god we should say uh, uh, hello am i audible yes yes you are oh okay okay yeah yeah so it's, it's a very oh okay yeah yeah uh, so i'll just continue uh, uh excuse me Chitya. Uh, uh -huh. can you just wait for two minutes ma'am's connection is lost just two minutes oh okay okay sure, sure. Okay, sorry about that, uh, uh, Divya. My connection was lost. So if you don't mind, uh, could you please come again? Yeah, no problem, no problem. So yeah, I was just uh, saying about this Asbury revival itself. Yeah, it's a very, uh, everyone uh, testifies that it's a very sweet, uh, that's the term that they use. It's a very sweet uh, move of God uh, because there's a lot of uh, confession, repentance and pursuit of like holiness in that uh, not like any um, you know it's it's very unique it seems and also uh, i was just hearing uh, like um, there have been five revivals in the same university and each time they have a revival that sparks other revivals in the in across uh, across the world so uh, I, I was hearing a person talking about Jesus movement, holiness movement, and such such uh, movements that have been sparked uh, through Asbury revival. So um, yeah, even as this, uh, they are almost uh, planning to you know close down uh, to the public uh, in the coming days, but still have a sense of like uh, this will it will spread across different even now it has spread to different universities and churches and places so yeah just uh, praying yeah that it, it spreads across you know not only really, uh, just limited to that area but there is a history that it has always yeah yeah thank you yeah thank you divya thank you for sharing that uh, truly, God is at work and He is working all over the world. And we thank God for what is happening right now. Uh, and it's so it's very strengthening, isn't it, to to know that uh, this kind of renewal is coming to the church where we are wanting a change in us, right? That freshness to keep following the Lord. So really, thank God for it. And this is how you know, God is working on his body. And uh, we will see more and more of the manifestation of the supernatural through our lives, whether it's healings or miracles or even the prophetic. So let's expect, even through our life and ministry, let's expect uh, it's, it's only going to get better from here. So let's move ahead. So far, we 
said prophetic uh, power, uh, prophetic word. But the next one here, the way God works is through the prophetic song. So chapter 7, uh, we do see that the prophetic is released okay, through worship, through praise. And as I said already, it is released through the words or the song or music itself. Okay. Uh, there can be other creative expressions that are connected with music, such as uh, dance, or there can be uh, expressions of, you know, these days, so many things, artistic things are happening, a drama, or even, uh, you know, as the music plays, there's, there's uh, drawing, sketching, painting. So creative expressions, right, uh, which may accompany prophetic music. Uh, why is there <coughs> this talk about music and the prophetic? Because we've seen in the Old Testament particularly that there is a strong connection uh, between these two. So we've seen the time when Samuel sets up the schools of the prophets and we saw how uh, he had, part of, as part of his training, people who prophesied, but they were also taught to use instruments. Okay, uh, And uh, this is pretty clear when Saul encounters a company of prophets. This is in 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 5, where these company of prophets, uh, they have stringed instrument, tambourine, fru flute, harp, and they were prophesying. So seems like they were nurturing the gift, developing the gift uh, in a company, you know, the uh, uh, a, a, together with music. Okay. So music is a beautiful gift that God has given us. Uh, and especially when it comes to the prophetic, if we know how to tap into it, uh, it can be a sort of, uh, uh, you know, a support for us to flow in the prophetic. So uh, we are used to hearing from God and saying it as a message. So we talked about it, prophetic word. Pro but what is prophetic song? Prophetic song, again, is something like, you know, we hear from God and that is released. Okay, through the uh, the song that we are singing. And I also said that we can have music. You know, sometimes people say, uh, just to describe prophetic music, they, they say things like, uh, what I'm hearing from heaven, or the melody of heaven, or the melody of the spirit, uh, that is being released. So the now music that one is hearing. So as we've said so far, you know, the prophetic word comes with power and God will perform his word. Okay. God will do something. There is a power that comes together with the word. And uh, prophetic power as such, we know. Now, when we talk about prophetic song or music, same thing. There is a power. You know, which accompanies uh, and, and God is able to accomplish something when there is a flow of the prophetic song or prophetic music. And that is why we are interested. You know, we want to know, hey, how can we flow better in prophetic song <clears throat> or music uh, and then receive what God has in store for us? So the early prophets. Uh, obviously had an idea. So we talked about Elisha also. If you recall, we said, you know, in 2 Kings 3, when uh, uh, Elisha, okay, he has to prophesy uh, and he has certain kings come up to him. He uh, initially, you know, he's upset about something and his mood is not okay. But when he finally has to hear a word from the Lord, he says, bring me a musician. And the musician comes and then, you know, all of a sudden, he starts to flow in the prophetic word, which is given to these kings who come. 
So what, what exactly is happening? Elisha recognized that the right kind of music, OK, and you know, you can go with the words that I'm using. The right kind of music can set the tone for the flow of the prophetic. Okay. So this person whom he called was again likely to be from his, uh, from the school of the prophet. So they knew, they knew how to hear uh, uh, from God while ministering in song. So the tune that person may have played would have been a prophetic tune, possible. Okay, so the right kind of music set the tone for the flow of the prophetic anointing. And then Elisha begins to prophesy and says, thus says the Lord, and it happens. So we are talking about this because we can have this key and understand it. We can equip our worship teams, our song leaders, you know, our churches to also make use of it. So when our teams can flow in prophetic song, in prophetic music, what happens? We can experience more of what you know God does in our midst. And it's really beautiful. Like actually, it happened this Sunday. <clears throat> The person who was rostered to lead worship uh, at uh, our congregation, our location, North Church. So he had a set of songs. And some of the people who are doing the uh, PowerPoint are new. Uh, so he, he was leading worship, leading worship. Everything was ready. So they had made everything ready and all. Uh, and somewhere in the middle, he just started singing what God was putting in his heart. Okay, it's, it's a familiar song, but it was not in the list. So uh, some of our uh, young student volunteers, they got confused. They're trying to search, where is the song? Where is the song? So I could really, literally see them struggling over there because they didn't know how to manage the situation. Uh, but it was a blessing that the worship leader just started off with what the spirit had put on his heart. And uh, we could see you know, the, the atmosphere kind of, you know, uh, something was different. When he when he was singing those lines, but it was actually not part of his list. Okay, so after the worship time, we just had a chat, and we said, uh, I, I was just telling the worship leader, hey, don't hold back. If God is putting it on your heart, then fit it in, no problem. Don't don't worry. So he was also saying, oh, but the you know PowerPoint people were struggling, uh, and we said, no, no, let's let's all talk about this together, uh, and uh, we will brief the people who are handling the, the media uh, and tell them there will be moments where God will lead us differently. So just be ready. You know, maybe you may want to uh, type those new words. Maybe it's a new song which has never been sung before or it's, it's probably, you know, something out of the list. But you can Google it, quickly get it so that the uh, congregation can also flow with it. So this is the blessing of uh, hearing from God and ministering uh, in song and in music. So as we look at uh, the Tabernacle of David, again, this is a repeated subject uh, in our courses uh, where we've talked about how he chose uh, musicians in the uh, for the Tabernacle, for worship. So he had there are there's a whole list of names you know you have some of these senior leaders uh, asaf heman jaduthan uh, who it says they had instruments okay like harps stringed instruments cymbals uh, and they also had you know people under them so there again there are uh, lots of names <clears throat> sons of asaf itself uh, zakur joseph nethaniah asherela so there are all these people. They they had teams of people. They had instruments. And as you read those passages, you recognize that they were prophesying. Or in other words, they were hearing from God and they were singing. They were ministering. Now, we know 
that uh, this form of worship that David established, the tabernacle of David, you know, it was day and night, 24 bar 7 worship, where he got the most skilled musicians, the most skilled vocalists, and it was organized very well. So he had people who were controlling uh, the crowds and directing the flow of what was happening there uh, with excellence. So how did they sustain something like this you know, for 30 plus years? It's because, yes, they had resources in terms of the past songs that God had given them, but a lot of what was happening was prophetic. So God was releasing new music new songs otherwise imagine you know you sing for 24 hours you sing all the songs that you know and then another 24 hours maybe some extra songs that we know finished now if god is helping us carry on in this way we have a 15 day you know god is moving upon us and we are singing songs where will this, these many songs come from you know, some of them have got to be new songs and that's what we are saying god releases prophetic songs, music, uh, and as far as David's tabernacle was concerned, all these main men, you know, Asaf, Jeduthun, Heman, they uh, were appointed by the king, they were leaders in music, but they knew how to train the younger ones or the ones who came in, you know, 288, uh, it says, uh, instructed in song. Okay, so those many people were part of leading worship, if, if you want to call it so. So they knew how to train them to not only be skillful, but also pick up what is God saying? You know, what is God releasing through you as you are leading people into worship? So they knew how to train up. Uh, uh, so, you know, prophetic music is nothing new. It existed even in uh, the Old Testament times. Uh, so for us today, incorporating it into our regular worship and praise, it's a blessing. You know, just the way it's a blessing, edification, exhortation, comfort. Remember, we said that the prophetic word will bring that. Why can't the prophetic song bring the same thing? Isn't it? So when that word comes as a song, it might be as simple as, God is saying, you know, uh, he loves us or something. Just one line. What's happening? It's really blessing the hearts of the people. We don't know. Maybe somebody ha has been uh, uh, in the bondage of uh, sin and condemned. But as the leader is singing that one line, that truth, the now truth that God is giving them, he loves us. Chains are being broken. You know, that person is being engulfed in the in the love of God and being set free in that very moment. So it's very powerful for us to train ourselves and the ones in our group to flow in prophetic mu music, prophetic song. So we'll learn more about it. Okay, it's it's not uh, when we hear about you know prophetic. Sometimes we think disorder. Isn't it? So when we think, oh, people are prophesying, there's chaos because everyone's just releasing what's coming. But we know how Paul instructed the uh, believers, prophesy one by one. Similarly, when it comes to prophetic song, we can do it in a nice way, in an orderly way. And uh, it need not create <coughs> confusion when people are leading in worship. So, okay. Uh, so, prophetic uh, worship is very powerful. Uh, it can bring that edification, exhortation, comfort. But at the same time, you know, it can also reveal the purpose of God. Same things, whatever we said for prophetic word can happen here. So, God may actually, somebody is singing that prophecy that God is going to do this over the nation or God is, you know, doing this over the lives of the people. So, it's revealing. God's plan that can happen, or faith can arise suddenly. You know, one line that the person is singing can cause, like, he's a healer or something, right? But just a phrase. 
what's happening faith is being stirred up and then it moves us to receiving the uh, manifestation of god's power uh, or encouragement can come as, as we lead in prophetic song or it can also cause a flow of miracles healings deliverance so again this happened at the north church two three weeks back or something i don't know uh, how many weeks ago we have the morning prayer time so uh, we have a set of prayer points that we pray every every sunday for so many years we are praying uh, so that sunday also we were praying but all of a sudden uh, that sunday i i was rostered to lead so i was leading in prayer and i just felt that uh, let's take a few minutes to pray in the spirit so we uh, we did some prayer points and then we came into this moment of praying in the spirit so we were praying we were praying but we sense something different something different happening uh, in our midst so while that uh, after that praying in the spirit time was over two words came out of my mouth okay it just came i was not thinking of saying it i stopped praying in tongues and i just said renew refresh okay i, I just said those statements and uh, everyone in the group they started saying pastor those words you said something about those words it, it was not ordinary god is doing something here in our midst and uh, then the worship st time started you know i can't explain it in words but everyone felt it even the people who were a little bit late and they were coming in for uh, the worship they were telling us that as we were hearing the music you know we were walking up the steps we knew something is different okay and on on that day the church was also kind of full so it was powerful we couldn't put it in words but god did something in our in our spirit okay so uh, all i'm trying to say is that when we let the manifestation of the prophetic it's going to be a blessing whether it is encouragement or healing of uh, the physical body or the mental person or whatever deliverance something begins to take place and so we have to make place make place for the prophetic and especially prophetic songs so we'll talk more about prophetic songs so here we have a list of the expression of the prophetic in song and music so at least four different ways as we see in scripture uh, so there are certain songs which can be classified as songs to the lord okay so when we sing to the lord we will see later on we would say uh, words of adoration we would uh, have expression of our love our affection towards god or our affirmation of his greatness so those are all all of that comes into the category of songs to the lord we are singing to the lord so uh, even if you sit and think some songs which we sing great are you lord what are we saying we are saying god this is you okay and we are singing to you so some prophetic songs can arise which are singing to the lord okay that's one group another group can be songs to the people okay so that simply means that there are songs that god sings over his people so he might say you know uh, uh, you are a chosen generation or uh, you know my people i love you what what is god doing we know that you know he's a god who rejoices over his people he sings over us he dances over us so there are some songs that may be released which are actually ministering to the people so one is to god the other is to the people some songs may be a declaration you know yours is the kingdom yours is the power or we say you know i raise a hallelujah so what is that these are all declaration so we are not necessarily singing it to somebody but we are proclaiming we are declaring the truth of god's word and when we do that uh 
it also becomes a declaration to the demonic realm isn't it uh, when when we are saying that you know uh, you are my healer i believe you are my healer is sometimes it's just a declaration and uh, the demonic world has to kind of just flee and uh, let go there, there there's got to be some deliverance that comes out of those declarations uh, or like god is fighting for us when when we say things like that our situation gets affected by our declaration where we are saying no god is fighting for me and suddenly there's a shift in the circumstance that i'm facing or you know it could be over the nation or it could be over uh, groups of people and all that so some declarations get made in our song and sometimes prophetic action can accompany uh, either one or the all of these okay so uh, let's say we are singing in the category of uh, uh, declaration while we are singing declaration there might be a sense where <clears throat> okay let's all bow down or let's all kneel down or let's all raise our hands okay so uh, it comes also like a prophetic instruction and as we do it you know something powerful is taking place in the spiritual realm so that's the way uh, you know all all these things actually work so let's move into prophetic song songs to the lord and as i shared songs to the lord are songs of love songs of praise songs of worship adoration it could even be songs of prayer and intercession where you know we are saying god bless our land something it's a petition that is rising up from within us and we are saying god you know we want you to do this heal our land oh god to the lord we are directing these songs they can even be songs of thanksgiving where we say thank you lord you know you've been so faithful uh, I, i so all of this is unto the lord and scriptures encourage us they encourage us to be prophetic when it comes to uh, singing because you know there is this concept of a new song sing to the lord a new song so psalm 33 verses 2 and 3 it says praise the lord with the harp make melody to him with an instrument of 10 strings sing to him a new song play skillfully with a shout of joy uh, not that god doesn't like old songs you know sometimes the old songs are the new songs you know for the moment we mean when we say new is that song for now that's the question we are asking so appropriate song and that's why you know we we will see later uh, when it comes to the preparation of a prophetic worshipper uh, a prophetic worshipper should be one who uh, sits in the presence of god who hears from god so even when uh, it comes to leading worship uh, to hear from god and say hey okay i'm choosing this list because uh, you know i have a prompting from the holy spirit that god is going to do something through these songs otherwise what happens uh, you know we have a classic way of uh, uh, worship worship time right three fast songs two slow songs uh, and then you're done okay any three fast songs or the most popular fast songs what's trending uh, on spotify you just pick whatever is happening and then you sing it but if we want to see the glory of god manifest through the prophetic flow then uh we have to be better than that at managing the worship time so pick those new songs or the song that god is putting on our hearts okay and go by that because then what will happen we'll see the flow of the spirit the work of the spirit so sing a new song unto the lord you know psalmist also in psalm 40 verse 3 he said he has put a new song in my mouth praise to our god many will see it and fear and will trust in the lord so uh, we are encouraged and you know there are scripture after scripture it says uh, sing to the lord a new song sing to the lord a new song i will sing a new song so god wants to put you know new things into into our mouth so i'll just read one uh, passage of scripture here and stop for today and we'll pick up from here you know new song we'll pick up from here later uh, isaiah 42 verses 9 and 
uh, behold the former things have come to pass and new things i declare before they spring forth i tell you of them sing to the lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth you who go down to the sea and all that is in it you coastlands and you inhabitants of them so you know uh, god is saying he's declaring new things and he wants us to sing a new song or let me put it this way since we're talking about the prophetic a now song a now song unto the lord so how about we just close in a word of prayer and we say god just stir up lord stir up more of the prophetic in us and uh, also put new songs in our hearts especially those who are in the in the worship ministry you know may the lord stir up new songs so can somebody just lead in prayer and we'll close for today Lord, we want to thank you for the lessons we learned today. Lord, we are grateful for all the uh, ways that you are ministering to us, Lord Jesus. Lord, uh, at this time, oh God, we pray that you would stir up our inner man and we would be able to listen from you and release songs um, and, and, and words and prophecies over uh, the generations that is around us, oh God. We pray that we would be sensitive to your voice, God. And everything that is coming out of us would be in alignment with you. And help us to tune into that. Help us to train our senses for that. We pray, O oh God, that um, you would minister to us personally and also to the people around us, God. And help us to be very sensitive to your voice, Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that we would tune ourselves so, so much into your voice, O oh God. And our hearts would always be bubbling out of what you have in store for us, Lord Jesus, what you have planned for us, God. And always help us to carry your presence, O oh God. We thank you. Uh, stir us up, O oh God, once again, we pray. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, John, for leading us. Uh, and God bless you, everyone. We will uh, connect again next week. Uh, until then, keep praying keep praying in the spirit i think that helps a lot for us to really stir up the prophetic or any other you know manifestation of the spirit in us so have a uh, blessed day and we'll connect next week thank you bye for now